In this next clip, we have Daniel Cheesy. Who, she was sentenced to two and a half years in prison for insider stock trading. And the problem with this is that she was sentenced to jail for doing her job. She provided information, she got information regarding stocks that, they, that her company was trying to, to trade. And the whole idea behind insider stock tip, that insider uh, trading is supposedly illegal. I mean, insider trading, she didn't work, she didn't even work for the company that was being traded. So, no, she wasn't actually an insider. She did get, inf she may have gotten information from insiders, but insider stock trading, how is it that insider, that you convict somebody who doesn't even work for the company that is, uh, that is in question, that was being traded, she doesn't even work for that company, and she's being convicted for insider stock trading. The other factor is that the issue of insider stock trading it's a manufactured crime the government needs manufactured crimes to draw attention away from what they are doing from the crimes of our own government our government prints infinite amounts of money borrows infinite amounts of money yes right now they're trying to raise the debt ceiling but of course they will raise it and then they'll borrow infinitely more and they'll just print however much more they need they'll use those printed dollars to buy those those treasury bonds that the treasury is issuing so the government the government is actually just buying its own debt. The Federal Reserve buys the government's own debt. That's what the that's a that's what the average person does not realize. So now the government has to find illegal activity, quote illegal activity in the private sector to try to draw attention away from what they're doing. The actual idea of insider trading is absolutely shouldn't be any reason why it should be illegal, so-called insider trading, by people who don't work on the inside. Price discovery, what all the all the insiders making making insider truck stock trading illegal just results in stocks being inflated in price unnecessarily people like Danielle she would take information trade off of it cause a stock to go up or down in price allowing other investors to see there there are either question marks or there are good there are good things that may be going on with this stock so then the average investor can see can discover what's going on with a stock instead of this quote insider information staying on the inside and then just suddenly the price drops or soars without any warning for the average investor that's what the stock market is about stocks going up and down but the government has created this idea in the public's mind that insider stock trading should be, quote, illegal. I should say, quote, insider stock trading. She never worked for the company in question. Yes, she got in information from an insider. The insider gave her that information freely. There just wasn't any reason for it. You have people working for a living, and they're arrested, charged with crimes, and imprisoned. Meanwhile, our government operates Ponzi schemes 
Ponzi schemes such as Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, the money that's collected from Medicare, Medicaid, etc. Those pro those programs are not funded out of the money that people paid in years ago. That money has been spent. The government has spent the money. Now they're warning of a debt default because the government already spent that money years ago. Now they're saying that we need to raise the debt ceiling so the government can borrow the money to pay for Social Security. So finally they admit the lockbox does not exist. That is make-believe. There was never any lockbox. Never. If there was a lockbox, then take the money out, pay Social Security. Pay it. Pay, pay all the pay Social Security, all the different programs the government has collected money on, Medicare, etc. The government should just take the money of the lockbox, pay the bills. They collected the money years ago. It's supposed to be in a lockbox. Get the money out of the lockbox. Pay Social Security, Medicare, Medicare, etc. Just pay it. But no, they can't because no, it was just it was just an imaginary idea, a lockbox. There is no lockbox. Government spent the money, and our our political leaders are actually criminals. That's what actually happened. Instead of the criminals, they arrest stock traders. Stock traders who did nothing illegal. Nothing. Your reaction to the, the sentencing? Um... Um, kind of an odd judge, clip. Uh, imposed what he thought was a uh, was a fair sentence. Um, we still believe that uh, the Danny sentence shouldn't have been any longer than Mark Curlin's, but we respect the, the thoughtfulness and the thoroughness that uh, uh, that the judge put into this. Um, Danny will serve her sentence, and uh, she will get on with her life. The thoughtfulness of the judge's sentence. Is this lawyer is this lawyer a joke or what? How can you win a case like that? How can you win a case? I'm sure he never challenged any any part of the basis of the case. What's the message? That finding out information on stocks is illegal. Is that the message? What is it they want people on Wall Street to do? Pretend that they know something about stocks when they don't? They're just looking... Their, their job on Wall Street is to find out information on stocks. Then they trade on it. That's their job, five days or seven days a week or whatever, 24-7. That's their job. Trade stocks. Let the stock brokers, let the, let the stock analysts and the brokers trade stocks. I mean, that, 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 that's... A question I think a lawyer can answer. The judge, listen, every criminal case has a component of general deterrence involved. Um, and that's that's an element of sentencing that's, uh, that's contained in uh, the sentencing statute. So the judge is perfectly uh, entitled to take general deterrence into effect. Um, I would argue that the publicity that this case has already received 
uh, has certainly sent a general deterrent effect out to Wall Street. And whether Danny's sentence was 30 months or 27 months or 24 months would not have changed that message. Has she mentally prepared herself for suspension? You can answer. Have you mentally prepared yourself to get her to go to prison? Absolutely. Yeah. How do you think? What do you anticipate? I anticipate to survive. How will you do that? I survive. I'm breathing. Understand the judge makes a recommendation. The Bureau of Prisons normally follows a judge's recommendation, but again, it's dependent upon, I guess, what you call bed space. Uh, so our hope is that uh, that the designation is Alderson, but it's not guaranteed. The real goal of the government is to make everyone equal. Stock traders, they're going to make the same amount as the person working in McDonald's or the person you know shuffling papers in some government office nobody can make more than anybody else yes the stock traders they make millions of dollars and whatever but it's not something that the average person can or wants to do trade stocks on a daily basis so let let the uh, let the stock traders do it Stock, the stock traders in no way cost anybody else money. Unless it's a zero-sum game. But it's not a zero-sum game. Not at all. Stocks can go up and down. Doesn't mean that anybody is necessarily losing money or gaining anybody else necessarily that it's at the expense of someone else. No. If a stock goes up to the sky, that doesn't mean anybody else has lost the money. If the, if the stock goes down to zero, yes, investors may lose money. Other investors may, in fact, lose money. But the fact is that when the stock, when someone like her provides, quote, gets a hold of, quote, insider information, then they forward it to someone else at their company who acts on, the, on this, quote, insider information, causes the stock to go down. That information does not cause the stock in itself. That they have that information is not the reason the stock is going down. The reason the stock is going down is because there's a problem in that business so the stock is inevitably gonna go down and it's better that that information comes to light sooner rather than later so then the so then you the, so that you can say well what is the, how is it that they get a hold of this information in advance of everybody else they have the advance warning yes they do have the advance warning that is true but this advance warning makes the stock go down, start to go down, and then other investors can see from the price action that the stock, that there's uh, there's some kind of problem with the stock. The stock has become weak and is going down. That gives the opportunity for other investors to jump in, sell the stock, or to buy it, make money. If the information didn't become known, that doesn't mean that the stock isn't going to go down or up. It's just the time frame. It became known sooner than later. So then the average investor could do something before the stock goes down to zero or goes up to the sky. So there's absolutely no pr nothing wrong with with insider stock trading. That is why it's a perfectly legitimate activity, so-called insider stock trading. She's not an insider. Yes, they got information from an insider, but that's not, ins that's not insider stock trading. When someone on the outside 
gets information and trades. It's, it's just an absurdity. Government created crimes. I don't read the papers anymore. A lot of people know you through your voice on all of those tapes. I know that's how they know you. What else should they know about you? And what and what are those are those tapes representative of who you are and who you were? No, it, it, what do you ask? And what do you expect me to say? Absolutely not. Were you, were, 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 were you in court and did you hear the excerpts of the letters that that we that we read today? Yeah. That's who Danny Cassidy is. Danny is something to the prosecutor. I think she actually thanked him for being professional. And I told the FBI, if they're ever going to knock on my door again, do it in the afternoon. <laughs> she's, she's really oh, jovial. Six in the morning. After she's been convicted of two and a half years in jail, but she seems to be taking it pretty, pretty well. There's, there's relief that this is over. The, the anxiety that's been building... Well, since October 16th, 2009, but certainly since Danny pled guilty last January, it becomes overwhelming. Um, Danny prepared herself for a sentencing within the range that she received. So um, when that happens, certainly you're not happy about it. This is not a pleasant day by any means, but it is at least over and she now knows when she's going to report to prison and she knows that sometime within the next less than 30 months she will be able to pick up her life okay thank you thank you, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. be kind